all straightened out. Keep a little talking to, man to man, mano a mano. Hey, Steve! Is now a good time? No? Okay, no problem. Bye. Or D, help her find a new boyfriend. I know a great place to meet boys. The internet. Nice, single, boys. Never mind. How about some ice cream? As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. For more information on how you can adopt, visit AdoptUSKids.org. A public service announcement from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt U.S. Kids, and the Ad Council. The Big 1400 is WJZM, Clarksville, Fort Campbell, Hopkinsville. <laughs> This is Grace and Truth. Your host for the next hour is Jason Sage. Grace and Truth airs live on Tuesdays at noon on WJZM 1400 AM. We would love for you to post a Bible question to our Facebook page, Grace and Truth 1400. Our phone lines are open at 931-645-6414. All right, welcome to the show. Thank you for being with us. This is Grace and Truth Radio. My name is Jason Sage. I'm the minister with the North 2nd Street Church of Christ here in Clarksville, Tennessee. And we're glad that you've taken a little bit of your day to share with us here on the radio. Lots coming up on the show. We're going to talk about repentance uh, and encourage you to do it. That's the basic idea there. We're also going to talk about what it means to be a skeptical Christian. Uh, for those of you who uh, may be out there today who don't believe in Jesus Christ, uh, who don't believe in the resurrection, maybe don't believe in God, we're going to talk about some of those issues uh, and uh, try to produce faith in your heart and give you a reason to believe. All that coming up on the show, as well as our proverb of the day today, and we cheat and we go to the book of Ecclesiastes, but it's not really cheating. Uh, Solomon wrote them, and they're still the wisdom of God. So all that coming up on the show today, including uh, your comments, your questions. Uh, we actually have uh, someone who contacted us via the Facebook page with a prayer request. We're going to talk about that. A little bit, and as always, we encourage you to do so. If you want to get in touch with the show, the best way to do so is to call 931 645 6414 is the number 931 645 6414. Or you can get in touch with us through our various social media platforms. You can find us at Grace Truth 1400 on Facebook, Grace Truth 1400 on Twitter, and as always, you can watch a live video stream of the program on WJZM's Facebook page. And if that's not enough, you can consume the show through the live TuneIn uh, radio app. I believe that's all the ways you can get in touch with the show. If you uh, get in touch with us through the Facebook page or Twitter, uh, we will read your Bible question or your prayer request on the air. Uh, we would love to hear from you because we want this show to be about what interests you and what concerns you. We are a different kind of Christian radio show. And one of the things in which we are different is we always start with Chaka Khan. Not just Chaka Khan, but something good. It's how we get you off on the good foot in the spirit. Tell me something. something good for today comes from the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 6. And basically the idea of this segment is very simple. We, we want to be positive every day. We were thinking about uh, what to do on the show and, and the different things we talk about out there. And sometimes, certainly, uh, when you talk about uh, getting people to submit to God and submit to Jesus Christ, you're going to talk about issues in which there are differences. You're going to have things where God is saying, stop doing what you're doing. We want you to change in your life. Uh, so we didn't want the show to be overcome uh, with uh, too many to not twos, as Mater would say in the Cars movie. Uh, so we wanted to have something positive. So basically, this segment is just trying to read something from the scriptures 
that hopefully will speak to you. And for this one today, I don't know what better uh, than 2 Corinthians chapter 6. And let's begin reading uh, in verse 16. The Word of God says, What agreement has the temple of God with idols? Let me stop right there for just a moment. Within the context of what's going on here. Paul is talking about us as individuals, us as our bodies, us as a dwelling places for the Holy Spirit of God. Those who are of Christ uh, have the Holy Spirit dwelling in them. So what agreement has the temple of God or our bodies with idols? For we are the temple of the living God. Now here's the good news part. As God said, I will make my dwelling place among them and walk among them. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. Therefore, go out from their midst and be separate from them, says the Lord, and touch no unclean thing. Then I will welcome you, and I will be a father to you, and you will be sons and daughters to me, says the Lord Almighty. Since we have these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from every defilement of body and spirit, bringing holiness to completion in the fear of God. What better thought? How many people in the world today need the comforting thought that God is with them? How many people in the world today need the comfort of a father figure in their life? You may have lost them through death or uh, through uh, being left by your father or your father may no longer be in your life for whatever the reason may be. Uh, and you may reach out and you may wish for that comfort. You may wish for that comforting hand. I think that's why Psalm 23 is so popular among so many people. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The idea that God is with us and God guides us and God comforts us and is there as a loving hand. What a wonderful thought. Is God your father? He can be. There's nothing that stands between you and God except your own will. That, it, such, a, such a simple thing, but so, such a thing that so many of us are refuse to give up from time to time. But God will come and live with us. God will come and be with us in his spirit he will dwell with us on this earth he will give us his spirit as his deposit and his promise of eternal life we'll have this little spark of the eternal in us as a promise that one day we can go and live eternally with him and go and live in his home and live in his house and be provided for i have two teenage children i have a 16 year old who still lives at home i provide for him <laughs> believe me i provide for him He's fed by me. He's housed by me. He doesn't have to worry about a thing except getting up and trying to make good grades in school. He has no idea, by the way, how easy his life is right now, and God bless him. But how beautiful would that be to be our own teenager in the house of God, to be eating nothing but Captain Crunch and whatever food mom makes us and having someone wash all our clothes and deal with all our things. That's the promise of heaven. Is living as a teenager in the house of God, is there a better thing? I do not know that there is. Is there a better way to start your day than to remember that God is with us every step of the way, that he is our shepherd, he is our father, he loves us, and we can come to him, we can put away the things in our life that are not God, and we can draw near to him every day. It is the blessing of being in Jesus Christ. Thank you for being with us on the show today. We're going to talk about a lot of things, but we th well, thought we'd start off with that beautiful thought that God is with us at all times. Thank you, Lord. Praise your name. We're so thoughtful, thankful that you're with us. We're so thankful that you've forgiven us our sins. And we're so thankful that we have a home and a promise of heaven with you one day. That's the Christian message. It's the gospel message. Respond to it today if we can help you in any way. We call it Grace and Truth Radio, and we'll be right back with more in a minute. James 127 is a clear directive for Christians to help widows and orphans. We do very well helping widows, but what about orphans? Many Christian families would love to adopt, but cannot afford the $25 to $30,000 cost. Sacred Selections is a nonprofit foundation designed to help. 100% of your donations go directly to help finance an adoption. Sacred Selections has helped 119 families adopt children. SacredSelections.org, helping Christians help the helpless. When I was little, I didn't talk for a long time. I was sensitive to lights and sounds, so I built secret hiding places where they couldn't get in. Sometimes, I do the same things over and over, until one day, I found out I had autism. My family got me help. Slowly, I learned how to live with it better. 
Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at AutismSpeaks.org slash signs. Brought to you by Autism Speaks and the Ad Council. In the Bible, the word for church simply means a group of people. The Church of Christ that meets on North 2nd Street in Clarksville is just that. We're a group of people spreading the love of Jesus, worshiping God, and seeking Him through His Spirit-revealed Word. Our Bible studies are simple and offered for all ages. Our worship is intended to praise God and encourage His saints. Our worship starts at 10 and 5 on the Lord's Day. Find out more at NorthSecondCofC.org. Find the love of Jesus at the North 2nd Street Church of Christ. Chris, you're not acting like a grown-up in our relationship. M2, M2. There's your comic book collection, the race car bed. I'm young at heart, but I put money into my 401k every paycheck. I'm taking control over my financial life, and that feels pretty grown-up to me. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free ideas and easy ways to save, go to feedthepig.org. That's feedthepig.org. Are those footy pajamas? This message brought to you by the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants and the Ad Council. Grace and Truth is on Twitter. Follow us at Grace Truth 1400. All right, welcome back into the show. Thank you for being with us. I want to acknowledge a couple that came to visit us uh, this Sunday at Second Street. We always invite everybody to come and uh, and listen to us and come worship God with us. And we had a couple from Burns come all the way up uh, from Southern Dixon County to see us at North Second Street. Thank you for that. You encourage me personally. Uh, encourage the church at Second Street. In fact, I want to take a moment to thank the members at North Second Street. This this work, this show that we do, uh, is something that uh, really just came out of my brain. Uh, I just decided to do it uh, a couple of years ago, and I decided I would do it. And if I needed to sell advertising on the show uh, to support it, then I would. Uh, and I had a, a, you know, a couple from our local congregation who chose to support it for a while, and then the congregation as a whole as you hear, advertises on the show uh, and supports uh, the cost of producing the show. And I, I want to thank those at North Second Street uh, for doing that. We talk a lot about the contribution. We talk a, lo a lot about giving. Uh, but this radio show is literally the fruits of your labors. And I thank you for it. Uh, and may God be blessed and God be praised in everything that we do. Uh, amen. All right, speaking of the show today, coming up on the show, we're going to talk to uh, or talk about being skeptical of God, skeptical of Christ. I think a lot of people out there uh, haven't come to faith in Jesus Christ. In fact, I would say uh, a majority maybe of those listening don't have faith in Jesus Christ. We're going to talk about that and tell you why we believe in the resurrection, why I personally believe in the resurrection. I don't believe in a myth. I don't believe in some fairy tale. I believe in something that really happened in history. And I believe in a man that really walked on the earth, really was the son of God, and really was resurrected from the dead. Stay tuned. That's coming up on the show. Also, we're going to answer the question, why do you insist on baptism? If you've ever been around uh, churches of Christ or those that uh, preach and teach the way that we do, uh, we always talk about baptism in a way that separates us uh, from most of the religious world, or at least most of the religious world in this part of the country. Why do we insist upon that? Well, Try and explain that to you a little bit later in the show. But first, it's time to go back in time and see what eternal truths we can learn from Solomon. Today's proverb is brought to you by Solomon, wiser than you for nearly 3,000 years. Way back, a 1,000 years before Christ, Solomon lived, and he wrote not only the book of Proverbs, or at least most of the book of Proverbs, but he also wrote the book of Ecclesiastes. And the book of Ecclesiastes is such a beautiful book. And when you think of a proverb within the Bible, they're not all contained within the book of Proverbs. In fact, the book of Ecclesiastes uh, is full of Proverbs. And Solomon, uh, when he lived his life, uh, he was the wisest man who ever lived. And God gave him great blessings and great riches. And the kingdom of Israel probably reached its zenith under his leadership. But he also lived a sinful life. He married a woman who pulled his heart away from God. Uh, he was rejected in many ways. The kingdom was pulled away from his descendants. The unified kingdom of Israel did not last uh, past Solomon's reign. So there are many ways in which he made lots of mistakes. So Solomon looks back on his life, 
and he writes the book of Ecclesiastes. And he has wisdom for us. And I want to study today from Ecclesiastes chapter 9. Uh, and I want to take a look at real quickly at verse 4 and then drop down to verse 7. Because what Solomon tells us is trying to strive after riches, trying to strive after wisdom, trying to strive after glory, all those things are vanity. And you've heard that phrase before, vanity of vanity, says the preacher, all is vanity. So what Solomon is talking about in, in chapter 9 is this. We all die. And since we all die, we shouldn't be overly concerned with the day-to-day the -day striving after riches and glory of mankind. And he says this in verse 4 to kind of set up the theme. He says, but he who is joined with all the living has hope. For a living dog is better than a dead lion. So what he's saying is this. We all die, but for those of us who are still living, there's still hope. There's still something that we can do, something that we can learn, something that we can do to glorify God. So he says there, in the grand scheme of things, a lion may be greater than a dog. Uh, I don't know that I want to have a pet lion. Uh, but at any rate, a lion may be greater than a dog, but a dead lion uh, does not have the opportunity uh, that a living dog has. So if you go down now to verse 7, uh, he kind of has the conclusion of the matter, so to speak. So for us today, what should we look for in happiness? Many of us have anxiety. There's no telling how many millions of Americans are on anxiety medication. We, we live in a very heavily medicated world. And so much of that comes from fear of the unknown, fear of tomorrow, fear of our finances, fear of what will happen with our family. But Solomon tells us not to worry about those things and to stay in the moment, so to speak. Listen to what he says in chapter 9 and verse 7. Go eat your bread with joy and drink your wine with a merry heart. For God has already approved what you do. Let your garments always be white. Let not oil be lacking on your head. Enjoy life with the wife whom you love all the days of your vain life that he has given you under the sun. Because that is your portion in life and in your toil at which you toil under the sun. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with your might, for there is no work or thought or knowledge or wisdom in Sheol to which you are going. Now Solomon here is saying some things that if you're not a Bible student or you're not familiar with Old Testament language, maybe seem a little obscure to you. Uh, in verse 8 there, he talks about your garment being white and let no oil be lacking from your head. Well, for us in, in modern times, we may not think of uh, having oil dripping down our beard or oil on our head as a positive thing, but for the Israelites at that period of time, it was almost a royal connotation. In fact, uh, Jesus, the word Christ, means anointed one. The kings of Israel were anointed with oil. The high priests of Israel were anointed with oil. It was a great blessing. If you've ever seen anything from the History Channel, on the ancient Egyptians of the time and the way that they would beautify one another and the way that they would work all these things. Oil was not something, you, you and I, if I came up to John Michaels and poured 10W40 on his head, he wouldn't think I was honoring him. I, I, I got to figure that. But in Israel's time, to have oil, olive oil, or anointing oil placed upon my head was a positive. It was a, it was a sign of happiness. It's opposed to sackcloth and ashes. So if Solomon here were to say sackcloth and ashes, he would mean mourning. If he would say, let your head be covered with oil, he's saying be glad and be joyful. And notice that the way he says to do that is to eat your bread and drink your wine. The simple daily pleasures in life, loving your husband or wife, eating a good meal in peace, these are the virtues. These are the things in life we should treasure. These are the things that are from God. What the book of Ecclesiastes tells us is you can be the richest man in the world, but if you don't have peace when you eat your meal, you have no benefit. If you don't have a loving, faithful wife, you're not as well off as the man who does. If you don't have a loving, faithful husband, you're not as well off as the wife that does. So Solomon is saying, while you're alive, 
Don't worry about all the other stuff. You go and enjoy the fruit of your labor. Whatever it is that you find your lot in life, do it with enthusiasm. The New Testament tells us to do our work as doing it to the Lord and to find joy in your labor and joy in your meals and joy in your personal relationships. What a beautiful message. How much of the anxiety in the world would, would stop? Jesus tells us in Matthew chapter 6 that tomorrow has enough troubles for its own, that we're to do things one day at a time. Take things one day, one moment at a time. Enjoy the simple pleasures in your life. Be at peace. And love the one who God has given you. It's a very simple message. We can get caught up in so much of what's going on around us. The social media, television, uh, the noise of daily life, the, the, the internet, the politics. Everything can swim around us. We can be so concerned. We may seem as if our life is running out of our control. And by the way, it is out of our control. This is kind of what Solomon is trying to say in his whole book, is you can't control it. You can't run ahead of it. So just sit down and enjoy what you have in front of you. What a blessed message. What wisdom from God. I'm going to eat lunch here in a minute. I hope it's good. I don't know where I'm going yet. But I'm going to enjoy it. My hope and my prayer is the same for you. I hope that when you're around your children or around your wife or around your relatives or you're around your fellow Christians, that you enjoy their company. I hope that when you uh, have a job to do, that you do it with all your might and services to the Lord. And then I hope you get your paycheck and I hope you enjoy it. And I hope you thank God and you praise him for his blessings. What a beautiful life we have in Christ. What beautiful blessings we have from God. Praise his name. Praise his son. Praise him in the spirit. We call the show Grace and Truth Radio. We're going to talk about the idea of repentance. And the, and the key to it is this. I'll give you the key to the whole segment. We need to repent. And the only way to do it is to do it. We'll be right back with more Grace and Truth Radio. Most people want the bad news first. So here it is. We have all sinned and deserve the wrath of God. But the good news is Jesus shed his blood and paid the price for our salvation. God gave us a sign of eternal life by raising him from the dead. His resurrection proves he's the Son of God, Christ my Lord. Come to him in faith. Be born again of water and the Spirit. Serve him and he will save you. That is the message of God. We are his servants at the North 2nd Street Church of Christ. Find out more at northsecondcfc.org. Whoa. The moment my son saw a redwood tree. It's huge! Is the moment I knew that for him. You can't even see the top of that thing! Even the sky has no limit. There are some moments only the forest can inspire. Find yours at discovertheforest.org. Learn about forests near you and discover cool things to do when you go. Your moment is out there. Find it at discovertheforest.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service and the Ad Council. Most people want the bad news first. So here it is. We have all sinned and deserve the wrath of God. But the good news is Jesus shed his blood and paid the price for our salvation. God gave us a sign of eternal life by raising him from the dead. His resurrection proves he's the Son of God, Christ my Lord. Come to him in faith. Be born again of water and the Spirit. Serve him and he will save you. That is the message of God. We are his servants at the North 2nd Street Church of Christ. Find out more at northsecondcfc.org. This is why you work so hard to pay the mortgage. Because home is more than four walls and a roof. It's that porch swing and a summer evening. It's everybody over for Sunday dinner. And your family sleeping in their own beds at night. Making home affordable is a free government resource that can make paying the mortgage easier. Call 888-995-HOPE or visit makinghomeaffordable.gov. Good night, Mama. This is why. Brought to you by the U.S. Treasury, HUD, and the Ad Council. This is Grace and Truth with your host, Jason Sage. 
Grace and Truth airs live on Tuesdays from noon to 1 on WJCM 1400 AM. We would love for you to post a Bible question to our Facebook page, Grace and Truth 1400. Our phone lines are open at 931-645-6414. All right, welcome back to the show. Thank you for being with us. We appreciate all the time and all the encouragement that we get from people out there. I uh, see people uh, nearly every week that say they listen to the show and uh, ran into several in the last couple of weeks and even had a couple come and worship with us at Second Street. And thank you for that and uh, thank you for your time and thank you for the encouragement. It is very meaningful. When I do the show, uh, I was in radio years and years ago. Uh, I started in radio in 1981. You can do the math on that. Uh, not in a Christian show, but just plain old disc jockey. Uh, and I had a, a disc jockey friend of mine say, uh, always imagine you've got a picture of your girlfriend. I was young at the time. He's, <laughs> Michaels is laughing. I bet he got the same message. Put a picture of your girlfriend on the top of the board and talk to her. Well, and, and, and when I preach and, and, and when I do the show, hopefully, I'm, ta I'm talking to you. I don't know who, I don't know who you are, uh, but I, I try, I try to, to do the show as if I'm uh, speaking directly to an individual. And when I preach... Uh, I will tell uh, people who uh, are in the congregation uh, that I appreciate uh, them looking uh, at me. Now, a lot of people pay attention to sermons and take notes. I certainly understand that. But uh, usually within a congregation, you'll have three or four people that are looking right at you. And I appreciate that because I like to look right at them. Uh, because when I'm speaking, I, I like to do so. I am speaking to one person. Uh, so when you come up to me, uh, and you say you listen to the show, uh, it's very meaningful to me because it's kind of putting a, a face with uh, with the radio world, the, the, the mystic radio waves of the world. Uh, I kind of have a face for it. So thank you for that. All right, that's moving on. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, blithering on here. Let's talk about repentance. Now, repentance is one of those things. We, we started the show off with something good, and we always try and be po we try to be positive here on the show. And repentance is positive. Don't look at it that way. Uh, but the reason repentance is not looked upon positively is because we are all selfish. And we are all caught up in what we do. We, we, we live the way we want to live, and we don't want to change. We fear change. And I think everybody's that way. That doesn't make you unique. Uh, a lot of people won't become a Christian uh, because they don't want to change. They don't want to give up their will. Well, I want to read to you the, uh, from Colossians chapter 3 uh, and verses 5 and following. And then talk about how important repentance is. And let's read a little bit and then we'll talk about it and, and then we'll give the secret to it. Uh, verse 5 of Colossians chapter 3 reads like this. Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming. In these you too once walked when you were living in them, but now you must put them all away. Anger, wrath, malice, slander, and obscene talk from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. Here there is not Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, free, but Christ is all in all. This putting away, the, the word repent does not appear here, but the, the, the idea of turning and putting away are the same thing. In other words, there are things in my life that I used to do, and Paul here is talking to Christians. He even says that. Some of you did these things. You used to walk in these things. When you see the word walk in the New Testament, it almost exclusively means your life. In other words, you used to live this way. You used to walk this way, but now you don't. Well, what happened? You had to change. You had to stop doing the things you used to do and start doing something else. So when he says, do not lie to one another, seeing that you put off the old self with its practices, he's saying you've repented. You've repented from anger and wrath and malice and slander and obscene talk. So what's the secret? The secret is to stop sinning. And that's deep, right? Well, it's that simple. Sometimes we look around and, and, and we think, well, uh, maybe there's going to be some mystical thing that can happen. We're, 
we're looking for a way out. Maybe, maybe there's some secret prayer I can say. Maybe, maybe the preacher knows a secret handshake. Uh, maybe they can wave some incense over me or perform some religious ritual, and boom, I won't be a sinner anymore. That's not the way it works. When I come to Christ in faith and in love, and I understand that he died on the cross for my sins, I understand that he is pure, I understand that sin cannot dwell with God, that is how I can change because I realize it is harmful and anathema to my Lord. Makes the hair in his nose curl up. That's kind of an expression in the, in the Old Testament, to become a stench in the nostrils. Sin is a stench in the nostril to God. So if he's my father, am I going to continue to do things that make his nose curl up? Jesus Christ died on the cross so that I can have forgiveness of sins. Will I continue in sin any longer? Romans 6 and verse 1 says, God forbid. So what's the secret? The secret is to stop sinning. Is that easy? No, not necessarily. It takes faith. It takes prayer. It takes patience. And it takes love. Listen to what Paul says in the next verse. Put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another. And if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. It's always interesting to me that in Colossians and in Galatians chapter 5 in particular, I have this juxtaposition between sin on the one hand and attitude on the other. Isn't that weird? Because I think we think of the opposite of sin as, as not sinning. <laughs> well, the opposite of not sinning is not not sinning. The opposite of sin is love. And if I put on love and faith, it takes care of the sin. Then the sin drifts into the background. Isn't that weird? Let me read that to you again. Put on then as God's chosen ones. Remember, he's just talked about sexual immorality and evil desire. He's talked about cursing and being angry and having malice and slander in one another. All those are sins, right? All those are actions. And then he turns from actions to attitudes. Put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bearing with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you, so you must forgive others. What's he saying? Change your heart. Change who you are on the inside. Become a lover, not a fighter. Come to love God and love Christ and love the things God loves and love the things Christ loves, and you will hate the things God hates. but it takes repentance. It takes a willingness to let go. I, I know for myself, when I became a Christian in my early 20s, uh, cussing and smoking cigarettes were biggies for me. And I didn't want to give them up because they were comfortable. I, I, I lived a life where that was the language that I used. It was, it was part of who I was. I was a cigarette smoker. I drove down the road. I, I sat around. That's what I did. And I, I, I was not comfortable giving them up. I think we have to be honest with ourselves. A lot of times the reason we don't give up sin is we're comfortable in our sin. And we have to realize that there's something better for us on the other side. That if I repent, that God will be there with me. That he'll strengthen me and cleanse me. Because God has something greater than cussing and cigarettes and, and sleeping around and using alcohol and, and being uh, angry and having resentments. God has something so much better for us. Those things may be useful in our lives as sinner. We, we, we may like them. We may be comfortable with them. They may have a place in our life, and it may be hard to get rid of them. But God has something better, and that is love. That's compassionate hearts. It's kindness, humility, meekness, patience, bearing with one another, forgiving one another. That's a better place to be. That's where the love is. That's where the blessing of God is. That's where the peace of Christ is. 
fact, verse 15 of this same chapter says, And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you are called in one body, and be thankful. Let me give you one more tip, and then we'll move on. God will help you, and God will strengthen you. If you're a Christian, and you're trying to put away all those things that belong to your old life, and you're trying to come to God, not only does God have something better in mind for you, but he will help you. He will be with you. He will strengthen you. Do you believe that? Come to God in faith today and believe it. Let me read to you two verses from Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse uh, uh, 15, excuse me, says that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being. Verse 16, by the way, I apologize. I read the wrong. That's why I was confused. I thought it was 16, I thought, but it looked like 15. That according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being. Do you believe that? Do you believe that you try to fight the good fight if you repent and you turn, that God will help you overcome sin? He will. Verse 20 now, same chapter, chapter 3 of Ephesians. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. If you're not a Christian, you don't have the power at work within you. If you are a Christian, God will be there for you. He will help you. He will hold your hand. You can cling to him, and he will never betray you. He will never leave you. He will never change. And you in faith can walk in holiness, can walk in kindness, can walk in forgiveness just like Jesus. And God will be with you, and he will strengthen you if you ask and if you knock. He will answer, and he will open. Oh, you can repent. You can do it today. Don't have fear. Perfect love drives out fear. Run from the fear. Hide from the fear. Run toward the love. Run toward the sun. Run toward the light. It's the Christian life, and you can find strength to overcome sin in faith and in being strengthened on the inside from the Holy Spirit of God. Amen? Amen. May you be able to repent and turn to Jesus today. He has something better in store for you. It's a walk with Christ, and it's a walk with in peace with God, and in peace with Christ. Amen. Stay right with us. We're going to come back and talk about why you should believe in Jesus Christ. Coming up next on Grace and Truth Radio. James 127 is a clear directive for Christians to help widows and orphans. We do very well helping widows, but what about orphans? Many Christian families would love to adopt, but cannot afford the twenty-five dollars to $30,000 cost. Sacred Selections is a nonprofit foundation designed to help. 100% of your donations go directly to help finance an adoption. Sacred Selections has helped 119 families adopt children. SacredSelections.org, helping Christians help the helpless. How can I help my daughter with her reading? Searching for help with Dachshund Reading. Uh, how can I help my daughter with her reading? Information on hot water heating. Uh, no. Sarah's bright, but when she's reading, she has trouble sounding out the words. World music playing track now. No. Let me try. Our daughter gets confused about which details in a story are important. Which paper towels are most absorbent? What? Here are five product reviews. Why are you not getting me? See, I told you. Wait, I was trying to show you how Sarah feels every day. Frustrating, isn't it? Redirecting to understood.org. For the one in five kids with learning and attention issues, this is what life can feel like. Explore understood.org, a free online resource about learning and attention issues designed to help your child thrive in school and in life. Understood.org, because understanding is everything. Brought to you by understood.org and the Ad Council. In the Bible, the word for church simply means a group of people. 
The Church of Christ that meets on North 2nd Street in Clarksville is just that. We're a group of people spreading the love of Jesus, worshiping God, and seeking Him through His Spirit-revealed Word. Our Bible studies are simple and offered for all ages. Our worship is intended to praise God and encourage His saints. Our worship starts at 10 and 5 on the Lord's Day. Find out more at northsecondcofc.org. Find the love of Jesus at the North 2nd Street Church of Christ. Grace and Truth is on Facebook. Ask a Bible question at Grace and Truth 1400. All right, welcome back into the show. Thank you for being with us. We are Grace and Truth Radio. We would love to hear from you. You can call us at 931-645-6414. You can find us on Facebook at Grace and Truth 1400. And you can find us on Twitter at Grace Truth 1400. We would love for you to be with us. Uh, you can catch a live audio stream of the program on the TuneIn uh, mobile app, and you can also follow us uh, on video via WJZM's Facebook page. Hi, everybody. How's it going? In fact, I had a lady ask me, why don't I turn toward the camera? Well, what you don't know is there's a kind of a, <laughs> there's a wall right here. Uh, if, I, if I turn toward the camera, I would uh, break my knee. And there you go. So that's, that answers that question. Uh, I want to talk about something, and I mean this. We talk about this all the time, say it all the time. And I want you to know that uh, we absolutely mean it. Uh, we talk about the idea that this is, show is just not for entertainment purposes, that we want to change your life. We want you to be a Christian. Uh, and I want to help in any way that I can. If that means a private Bible study, if you're looking for a uh, church to worship with, if you need to be baptized in submission to Christ, we want to be the hands of God for you. We're, well, we're not just doing this show uh, as a way to fill up airtime. Uh, we're doing it because we want to we want to touch your heart with the Word of God, and we want it to change you from the inside, and we want you to become a Christian. It's that plain and simple. And one of the things that we say all the time is contact us, uh, get in touch with us. Well, this week uh, I had a lady uh, send me a private message on the Facebook page, and I was really moved by it, uh, and I asked her if I could read it, and I want to read her message to you. Uh, and then I uh, want to talk a little bit about it, okay? So here it is, uh, and uh, I'm not using her name, but uh, here's the message that I got. It says, please pray for my 21-year-old daughter. She's headed down a dangerous path in life and has turned her back on God. She's been raised in a Christian home and is now questioning the existence of God. She has allowed negative influences in her life and following them, claiming she is happy with her choices. Thank you. Well, first of all, I certainly appreciate it. When we get to the segment in our show, when we pray, we're going to pray for this young lady and for this family. But first of all, I want you to know that we as Christians need to take this very seriously because we live in a day and age where faith in God is not uh, kind of built into the DNA of our society. I think for many of us uh, who are older than 30, let's say, that, that, that I think... Uh, we, we, every, everybody believed in God. Uh, you know, whether, whether they were Christians or, or not, almost everybody, there was kind of a built-in belief in God among Americans. We don't live in that era anymore. We don't live in that time. We live in an age where it's become kind of hip to not believe in God. And our young people are subject to that. And, and here's the, the challenge that that presents to us as parents and as Christians. We must have good answers for our faith. We must be able to talk to our children in a way that doesn't just assume a faith in God, but may have to build uh, a faith in God from, the, from the, the ground up. And this is not going to be a lesson about Acts chapter 17, but I, I urge you to, to open your Bibles and read Acts chapter 17, because that's exactly what Paul is doing there. He's, he's building up a faith from the, from the ground floor. So how do we do that? How do we take someone who's not a believer in Christ and make them a believer in Christ? I think for most of my life, uh, the people that I dealt with as a young person and, and dealt with as a, as, a, as a Christian were people who believed in Jesus to a certain extent. In other words, they acknowledged that Jesus was real. They acknowledged that God was real. And the challenge was, do you want to sacrifice to follow him? Do you want to give up sin for a life of holiness? And I think that was the conversion point for many. 
But now we have to go beyond that and realize that initial faith that Jesus was a real man, that he really lived, that he really died on the cross, and God really raised him from the dead. I think that's where we have to start. And I want you to know, to some extent, I was skeptical about that. I've talked a little bit about this on the show, and I don't mean to belabor the point, but it, uh, it is my personal life, and it informs a lot of uh, what I believe and know about the Bible. Uh, but I lived the first 21 years of my life uh, as a complete sinner. I did not deny God. I did not deny Christ. But I certainly did not submit to them. I lived a sinful life. The story of the prodigal son is very meaningful to me personally. Uh, I thank God that I'm sober today. I thank God that I'm clean today. It was the hardest thing that I've ever had to do, and it was without the strength of God, I could not have done it. Praise his name that he was there for me. And I live as a sober man now, but when I came back to the church, and I came back to my Bible, and I came back uh, to Christianity, I was a skeptic. I, like this young lady, had been raised in the church. We, that that kind of means something for us within Churches of Christ. And, and I had been raised, and I'd heard all those sermons, and when I came back to the Bible, I was a complete skeptic. I was kind of freed uh, because I'd lived such a, <laughs> believe me, I had been put away, and, uh, and rightfully so. My family and my friends and the people in the church uh, uh, had kind of written me off as well they should have. And I had written the church off. So when I came back, I was completely free of a lot of those uh, kind of guilty restraints of, well, what will my parents think? Because I'd done so many other things that I wasn't overly concerned about what they thought of me religiously. So I came back to my Bible, a skeptic about Christ, a skeptical about Church of Christ doctrine, so to speak. And I know there is no such thing, but uh, and that's not the lesson today. But the thing I want to focus on is I, I realized from reading my Bible that faith in Jesus Christ, faith in his resurrection was the key thing that I had to answer for myself. Did I really believe that Jesus was a real man who really died on the cross, and did I really believe he was resurrected by God? If I didn't believe that, I didn't want to be a Christian. I think that's where a lot of people are. So I want to address some of the things for me that helped me. Uh, one of which, and, and I'm not going to have time to do as much on this in this show as I wanted to. Uh, I read my Bible. Uh, I read Mark 16:16. 16, 16, I read Acts 2:38, and I came to believe that I needed to be baptized if I wanted to be a Christian. I came to believe that that's what the Bible teaches. I believed it then. I believe it now. The Word of God confirms that. But I did not want to be baptized unless I truly repented, and that for me was a big deal. And to truly have faith and truly repent and to give my life to this Jesus, I had to believe that he was real. And I had to believe that he had really been resurrected because that's the, the power of Christianity. And for me, Daniel chapter 2 helped me with that. Now, Daniel chapter 2 may not seem like the likely place to go here, but, but let me explain. Daniel chapter 2 is a prophecy of Jesus and it's a prophecy of Jesus that's really entrenched in time. For those of you who are Bible students, you may be familiar with it. Uh, Daniel is an Israelite. He's in Babylonian captivity. And while he's in Babylonian captivity, the king of Babylon, a man by the name of Nebuchadnezzar, has a dream. And he has a dream of an image that has a head of gold, chest and arms of silver, middle and thighs of bronze and legs of iron and feet partly of iron and clay. And Daniel interprets this dream for him in a way that explains something and tells us something about Jesus. Daniel chapter 2 says this, verse 31, You saw, O king, and behold a great image. This image, mighty and of exceeding brightness, stood before you, and its appearance was frightening. The head of this image was fine gold, its chest and arms of silver, its middle and thighs of bronze, its legs of iron, its feet partly of iron and partly of clay. As you looked, a stone was cut out by no human hand, and it struck the image on its feet of iron and clay and broke them in pieces. Then the iron, the clay, the bronze, the silver, and the gold 
altogether were broken in pieces and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors. And the wind carried them away so that not a trace of them could be found. But the stone that struck the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. Now what Daniel is describing here is kingdoms. He says as much through the inspiration of God in verse 44. It says, In the days of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that shall never be destroyed, nor shall the kingdom be left to another people. It shall break in pieces all these kingdoms and bring them to an end, and it shall stand forever. Now, what the Bible tells us in Daniel chapter 2, history tells us uh, in our history books. Nebuchadnezzar was the king of the Babylonian kingdom, which existed, history tells us, from about 626 to 539 B.C. And it was overcome by a second kingdom, the Medo-Persian Empire, from about 539 to 333. And then the third kingdom came into power, that's the Greeks, from 333 to 150 B.C. And then just as God had predicted in Daniel chapter 2, a fourth kingdom, kingdom rose to power we call that kingdom the roman empire which lasted from 150 bc to somewhere in the mid 400s a.d and in the middle of that kingdom god through daniel and through the dream of nebuchadnezzar tells us another kingdom will be established with a stone cut without hands that will start as a small stone and grow into a mountain that will cover the whole earth. In the period of time of the Roman Empire, a child was born to a virgin. He lived a sinless life. His name was Jesus. He lived and he died and he was resurrected. And he established a kingdom. In Acts chapter 2 and verse 36, Peter declares this kingdom and says, This Jesus whom you have crucified, God has made both Lord, that means king, and Christ, that means the anointed one, the Messiah. So just as God had predicted, Christ came and set up his kingdom in the period of time of the fourth kingdom. Now you might still be a skeptic and you might say, Oh, preacher man, that's that's just a made-up myth. Some Christian somewhere rewrote Daniel 200 years after Jesus, and uh, that's that's just that's something that didn't exist. There were there are people that will claim, oh, the Bible wasn't written for 500 to 1,000 years after Christ. Well, that can't be said because of a discovery that happened in the mid 20th century. of scrolls and little clay jars in a cave in Qumran. We call them the Dead Sea Scrolls. And in them, archaeologists and historians, not Christians, not radio preachers, have said contained on the paper are copies of Daniel from 125 years before Christ lived on the earth. Over 150 years before Christ died. And contained on those scrolls is that same story that in the era of the fourth kingdom, God would set up his kingdom and it would last forever. It can't be denied. that Jesus Christ went to the cross, that Jesus Christ has been given all authority and power in heaven and on earth, that Jesus Christ is King and Messiah, and his kingdom reigns. Look around you. Where's the Roman Empire? Where are the Greeks? Where are the Persians? Where's Nebuchadnezzar? Now ask yourself, where is the kingdom of God? Everywhere you see a church, 
and everywhere you see Christians, you see the kingdom of Jesus Christ, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of the Son, raised from the dead, resurrecting and reigning, and waiting to carry us home one day to reign with him. If we endure, we will reign with him, the Bible tells us. I believe in Jesus. I believe that he is the Jesus of prophecy. I believe that God has the ability to tell the future that he did and that he set up his kingdom and I can be a member of it. The other thing that Peter says in Acts chapter 2 is that all who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. The day of Pentecost was the day on which the kingdom was established and it reigns to this day. Are you a member? Are you in the body of Christ? We want you to be. Put your faith in Jesus Christ. He's not a myth. He is real. And you can come to him today. We beg that you do so. Be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins. Serve him in his kingdom. And he will save you and take you home to be with him. It's the message of Jesus Christ. May you find him today. We'll be right back. Most people want the bad news first. So here it is. We have all sinned and deserve the wrath of God. But the good news is Jesus shed his blood and paid the price for our salvation. God gave us a sign of eternal life by raising him from the dead. His resurrection proves he's the Son of God, Christ my Lord. Come to him in faith. Be born again of water and the Spirit. Serve him and he will save you. That is the message of God. We are his servants at the North 2nd Street Church of Christ. Find out more at north2ndcfc.org. You wanted to see me? Yes, please, have a seat. So here's the thing. When this company brought you on, we took a chance on you. You didn't have that four-year college degree we typically look for. Right. But we gave you a shot anyway. And since then, you've worked incredibly hard and given it your all. Thanks. You've been an important asset to the team, but I don't think you can be an intern here anymore. We want to hire you. You're, you're serious? Absolutely. Find your next great employee. Introduce yourself to the grads of life. Who are they? Talent worth knowing about. Young adults of unique determination and experience. An ideal fit for your company in an entry-level position, internship, or even mentorship. They might not have every qualification you typically look for, but they're exactly who your company needs. I won't let you down. I know. Don't miss out on a resource many innovative companies have already discovered. Go to gradsoflife.org to learn how to find, cultivate, and train this great pool of untapped talent. Brought to you by the Ad Council and gradsoflife.org. James 127 is a clear directive for Christians to help widows and orphans. We do very well helping widows, but what about orphans? Many Christian families would love to adopt, but cannot afford the $25,000 to $30,000 cost. Sacred Selections is a nonprofit foundation designed to help. 100% of your donations go directly to help finance an adoption. Sacred Selections has helped 119 families adopt children. SacredSelections.org, helping Christians help the helpless. Grace and Truth is on Twitter. Follow us at Grace Truth 1400. All right. Thank you for being with us on the show today. I am way over, uh, so I apologize for that. Uh, so quickly, uh, we're going to go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. And within this prayer, we're going to pray for this young lady that we mentioned in the last segment. So uh, thank you for that. And we certainly are uh, praying for her uh, in our private prayer. Uh, and we're glad to do so here publicly on the radio show. Would you go to God in prayer with me? Our Father, who art in his heaven, Lord, we thank you for this day. We praise your name. We thank you for salvation. We thank you for grace. We thank you for forgiveness. Help us to be loving and forgiving like you and your son. Lord, we come today in prayer for those that are struggling. I know that there are those who are struggling with sobriety and addiction. Please be with them, strengthen them. Help them to realize that the path of slavery is not where they want to go, but the path of freedom. Lord, we thank you and we praise you for the blessings in our life. We had a couple come to services with us Sunday that we haven't had for a long time. We appreciate and thank you for making them well enough to come and be with us. We praise your name. 
We thank you for the congregation at Second Street. We thank you for the blessings that you've given us. We ask that you continue to send us sinners and workers. We need them both. And Lord, we ask a special prayer today for this young lady who's struggling with faith and for her family. May something be said or done to prick her heart, to soften her, to help her to see the beauty of a life in Jesus Christ, to help her put their, her faith in you, to believe that you are the Almighty, to believe that you are the Creator, to believe that you are worthy of faith and a rewarder of those who diligently seek, your, who seek you. Lord, we ask this prayer. Lord, we ask that you be with those in our congregation who are struggling with chronic illnesses and physical illnesses, with loneliness, those who are struggling with sin and trying to be strengthened to overcome it. Lord, please be with them. Please be with our families and bless us. Give us faithful husbands and wives. Help us to love one another, to eat our bread, and to love our wives and our husbands, and to do everything in our strength to bless you and to be of service to you. Lord, we thank you for Jesus. We beg you for forgiveness. We praise you for your forgiveness. It's in his name we pray. Amen. All right, that's going to wrap it up for us on the show today. Thank you for being with us. As always, if you're listening to the show on Sunday, it's a repeat of the show, but that means it's a little before 9, and you still got time to join us at 10 o'clock at 2nd Street. Brush your teeth, put on your shoes, come see us. Till then, we will see you back here next time with Grace and Truth Radio. For church simply means a group of people. The Church of Christ that meets on North 2nd Street in Clarksville is just that. We're a group of people spreading the love of Jesus, worshiping God, and seeking Him through His Spirit-revealed Word. Our Bible studies are simple and offered for all ages. Our worship is intended to praise God and encourage His saints. Our worship starts at 10 and 5 on the Lord's Day. Find out more at northsecondcofc.org. Find the love of Jesus at the North 2nd Street Church of Christ. Every hiring manager knows that a company is only as good as the people it's made from. So where do you find the best people? That may surprise you. Meet the grads of life, young adults of unique determination and experience, an ideal fit for your company in an entry-level position, internship, or even mentorship. They might not have every qualification you typically look for, but they're exactly who your company needs. This is talent worth knowing about. Go to gradsoflife.org to learn how to find, cultivate, and train this great pool of untapped talent. Brought to you by the Ad Council and gradsoflife.org. James 127 is a clear directive for Christians to help widows and orphans. We do very well helping widows, but what about orphans? Many Christian families would love to adopt, but cannot afford the twenty-five to thirty thousand dollar cost. Sacred Selections is a nonprofit foundation designed to help. One hundred percent of your donations go directly to help finance an adoption. Sacred Selections has helped one hundred nineteen families adopt children. SacredSelections.org, helping.